Since I'm calling this video series Understanding Ken Wheeler's Missing Secrets of Magnetism, I thought it was about time that I did a video on magnets. My approach is going to be quite different than Ken's approach. What I will attempt to do is to combine the language of Ken Wheeler with the language of another independent researcher, Robert Distinti. Also, in order to make this a bit more fun for me, I'm going to pretend that I'm an alien from another planet that came to Earth to try to teach you a different cosmology. Obviously, if there is intelligent life on other planets, then they would have come to understand the universe in a very different way than we did. They would have a different language. They would say things differently. My name is Fractal Woman, and I am from planet Budabrat. On our planet, we have a very different view of magnetism. And that is what I'm going to talk about today. On our planet, we discovered charge before we discovered magnets. So our language is based on what we learned from moving charges. Here is what we discovered and how we discovered it. First, we start with two parallel wires hooked up to some charge source. When the charges pass through the wire in the same direction, we found that the wires were attracted to each other. Then we did the same experiment with two parallel wires, only this time we sent the charges in opposite directions. What we found was the wires repelled each other. So we came up with a rule. Same attract and opposites repel. Now, our people are a lot like your people in that we are very stubborn. And so when we come up with a rule, we like to stick with the rule. Same attract and opposites repel. So then we decided to coil the wires to see what would happen. We sent the current in the same direction in the first set of coils, and we sent the current in opposite directions in the second set of coils. To our surprise, the coils of a wire with the current going in the same direction repelled, and the coils of a wire with the current going in opposite directions attracted. Now it seemed that opposites attract and same repel. But being the stubborn beings that we were, we didn't want to give up on our rule. Same attract and opposites repel. Didn't take long before we realized what was going on. So let's take a closer look. When the current is flowing from bottom to top, like the coils in this image, the currents in both coils appear to be moving in a clockwise direction when viewed from above. Keep in mind that clockwise and counterclockwise are arbitrary concepts that depend on the perspective of the viewer. This is why I am specifying that we look at the coils from above the coils. This is our convention. As you can see, when the coils are next to each other, the currents closest to each other are flowing in opposite directions. So this doesn't contradict our rule after all. When the currents are moving in opposite directions, the coils repel. Now, let's look at the second case. When the current is flowing from bottom to top in one coil, the one on the left, then the current appears to be flowing in a clockwise direction when viewed from above the coils. But when the current is flowing from top to bottom, like the coil on the right, then the current appears to be flowing in a counterclockwise direction when viewed from above. In this case, the currents next to each other are flowing in the same direction. Remember our rule same attract. When currents are moving in the same direction, the coils attract. So our rule, same attracts, 
and opposites repel, still holds true. Remember, the Buddha Bratians are very stubborn people, and once we make a rule, we like to stick with the rule. Also remember that we discovered all of this before we discovered magnetism. Our discoveries and our language were completely founded in the way that currents move in a wire. Then we discovered magnets. We noticed that there were physical objects in nature that were not connected to any circuit, but were able to attract and repel each other. We soon learned how to make these objects and use them to advance our civilization, but we still didn't know exactly how they worked. At first, we thought that maybe they behaved like parallel wires and that there was some sort of current flowing through the objects longitudinally, and that was causing them to attract and repel. But this turned out to not be the case. When these objects were placed next to each other in the same orientation in which they were made, they would repel each other. And when they were placed next to each other in the opposite orientation in which they were made, they would attract. In other words, they acted more like the coils and less like the parallel wires. So we hypothesized that there was some sort of current circulating in and around the magnet analogous to the current circulating in a coil of wire and that this was the cause of attraction and repulsion in the magnet. But currents of what? We hypothesized that the vacuum of space was filled with a fluid of some kind, what you humans used to refer to as the ether. We speculated that these special objects were able to spin up the fluid ether in and around the magnet generating currents that would then result in attraction and repulsion analogous to what we saw in the coils. To test this hypothesis, we spun a couple of cylinders in a pool of water and watched their behaviors. Here is a video of one of these experiments. In this video, the cylinders are spinning in opposite directions. The spinning cylinders generate currents in the water surrounding the cylinders. When these cylinders are spinning in opposite directions, the currents generated between the two cylinders will be moving in the same direction. Therefore, according to our rule, same attracts. The cylinders should attract, and they do. In this experiment, the cylinders are spinning in the same direction. Again, this is going to generate currents in the water surrounding the cylinders. When the cylinders are spinning in the same direction, the currents generated between the two cylinders will be moving in opposite directions. Therefore, according to our rule, opposites repel, these cylinders should repel, and they do. So, it seems plausible that the function of the magnet could in fact be described by and explained by fluid dynamics. So nothing we have shown so far contradicts our original statement that same attracts and opposites repel. Of course, when we say same attracts and opposites repel, we are talking about the directions of current flow. So if there are currents flowing around magnets, then there should be some evidence of it, right? There should be some experiment that we could do to see the effects of this current. This is where the CRT experiments come in handy. But before we get to the CRT experiments, I want us to do a little thought experiment. When you ask an earthling, especially one that is a physicist, what is the most important part of a magnet? They will quickly reply, the poles. But if you ask the same person, what is the most important part of a gyroscope? They will reply, the flywheel. 
Of course, the poles are not the most important part of a gyroscope. This seems obvious. What I am suggesting here is that the so-called magnet also has a flywheel. The flywheel is what drives the gyroscope and the flywheel is what drives the magnet. The spinning currents in and around the magnet are analogous to the flywheel of a gyroscope. So here is a simplified drawing of a flywheel. It is spinning in a clockwise motion when viewed from the top. Now, we are going to pretend that this large cylinder is a CRT screen, and at the front of the screen is a thin film of fluid. Think of it like a waterfall falling from top to bottom. Now, we're going to move the spinning flywheel in the direction of the screen until it intersects the fluid. What do you think will happen? If the flywheel was not spinning, the water would just flow past and around the cylinder of the flywheel in a symmetrical manner. But when the flywheel is spinning, as shown here, the water will splash from left to right when the flywheel intersects the water. If we now reverse the direction of the spinning flywheel and bring it to the screen, the water will now splash from right to left when the flywheel intersects the screen. Next, I'm going to show you two movies. These movies show what happens when you bring a large neodymium magnet close to a CRT screen. In this video, the south pole is pointing up and the north pole of the magnet is pointing down. When the magnet gets really close to the surface of the screen, a large black void forms. The black void is analogous to the flywheel intersecting the fluid in the previous slides. The flywheel of the magnet is displacing the field, which is analogous to the fluid, at the front of the CRT screen. You can see in this experiment that the flywheel of the magnet is splashing the fluid from left to right. This experiment shows that the flywheel of the magnet must be spinning in a clockwise fashion when viewed from above. In this video, the north pole is pointing up and the south pole is pointing down. When the magnet gets close to the screen, the black void forms again. Again, this black void is analogous to the flywheel intersecting the fluid in the previous slides. Only this time, the fluid is splashing from right to left. This means that the flywheel of the magnet must be spinning in a counterclockwise motion when viewed from above. So, these experiments seem to vindicate our rules. Same attracts and opposites repel. When currents are flowing in the same direction, wires and magnets and cylinders attract. When currents are flowing in opposite directions, wires and magnets and spinning cylinders and water repel. Same attracts, opposites repel. So what does this mean for gravity? Gravity attracts, but it doesn't repel. Unfortunately, we're gonna to have to save that for another day.